introduce to you our very own Russell, Brother Russell. Mm. It is a privilege to be here today. And the pastor asked me a couple, I guess it was about a month ago, if I had a word and I did. This is not the word that I had at that time. But you know, God knows what our needs are. And my time was. was he, he hears, he sees, he knows, he answers. We have all heard the story of Moses. We heard it in our Sunday school classes when we were little. You know, and I want to not so much talk about that part of it, but there's some things that the Lord has really begun to deal with me on about the story of Moses. Whenever he was born, Pharaoh was concerned about the children of Israel. He said, they're getting too big. They're getting to be too much. Let's put task on them because what if they join our enemies and fight against us? Pharaoh was prophesying right then about what Moses was going to do. He was going to take the children of Israel and he was going to fight against Egypt. So we see that, Jesus, that Moses was rescued. He was put into the, a basket. We know that story. He was raised in Pharaoh's house. Forty years later, I'm sure he was raised by his mom, his real mom, along with Pharaoh's daughter, and heard the promises of things of God through the, her mom and dad, his mom and dad. And he knew there was something special in his life. And at the age of 40, he took on his own self to do the thing that he thought was right. He killed an Egyptian and buried him in the sand. The next day he came back and all of a sudden the Hebrew says, Who made you God? Who made you to be ruler over us? Who, who was you, set you up to be in the, our deliverer? Again, another word has come forward. Moses buried the Egyptian and ran for his life. He was scared of the Pharaoh. He was scared of the Hebrews. So he left. We ourselves, we try to hide and bury the call, the vision, the dreams that God has given to us in our hearts and our lives. And sometimes we run from that message that he's laid upon our hearts and in our lives. Whether it's our salvation of our families, whether it's a sickness in our bodies, whether it's whatever we that God has spoken to us and said that we are going to be able to do, we bury it. We put it in the ground and we run from it. We go another 40 years. Moses is out taking care of his father-in-law's flock. And in that custom, in that, in that part of the woods, there were, or woods, in that desert area, there was bushes that would catch on fire and burn up and go away. Moses looked, and he saw this bush burning, but it wasn't burning up. And he said, let me, y'all stay here, I'm going to go check this situation up. And what I look at this burning bush is, Whatever God has called and put in your heart and your life, it's going to continue to burn. It ain't going to burn out. Whether you run from God, whether you run from that call, whether you run from that mission, whether you run from whatever area that God has spoken to you in your heart and your life, he sees and he knows and he hears where you're at. And he said, and I can see Moses coming up and all of a sudden, God says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he falls to the ground, to the ground because he realizes that call that was on my life that I ran from, God is still there. 
it's still there and it's still mighty. Then all of a sudden, once we began to do it ourselves, we began to say, God, I, I, can't, I can't do that call. And that's what he began to do. I can't go. I can't go. I can't speak. I can't do this. And my problem with, with Moses is he was raised in Pharaoh's cab, you know, castle. He had the best teachers. He, he had the best instructors. How could he not speak if he had the best of the best? It's just a cop out. And that's the way we do. We know what the Bible says. We know what the scripture says for us to do. Let's go to Exodus 3 and 7. It says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So deliver them out of the hand, so deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Pezites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. They're kind of like the Authorites, the Rice brothers. Okay? Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. And when Pharaoh drew... Wait, that, okay, that's the next one. That's the next one. So what was... Pharaoh doing the 40 years before about this time they were putting taskmasters on them. they were building brick they were building mortar what do you do with brick and mortar you build walls you build buildings he was built they were building temples for the Egyptians they served all these different gods they served other other entities they had multiple gods and they were building these walls and same way with with them they began to cry, God, you got to protect us. And as they was helping build the walls, they were building the wall around themselves. How many times are we ourselves doing that? We're building walls around what God has spoken to our heart and our life. Whenever he said, I, I will save your family. I will heal you from this sickness. I will do this and I will do that. And then all of a sudden we don't see it exactly the way we think it's going to happen. We began to build walls around and say, well, God's not answering me. God's not hearing me. And whenever you build that wall, what the devil is trying to do is cause you to be where you can't see what God's doing. It's blind in your view, but God still sees where you're at and what you're doing and what you're going through. He wants to destroy you, just like Pharaoh wanted to destroy the children of Israel. He wanted to keep them down. He wanted to keep them apart. But Pharaoh didn't realize the children of Israel was going to be large anyhow because that was a promise to Abraham. And God's promised you and I things in our lives that we're going to see, and they're going to happen no matter how many Pharaohs come into our hearts and into our lives, that we're going to see that God's going to cause his word to come forth. Amen. We're not going to have to sit back and enjoy the misery all of our whole lives. We just read, he said, I see, Moses, I see what they're going through. I hear their cries. I know what they're going through, and now I'm sending you to deliver them. And we know that in the New Testament, Jesus came and he's offered up the, everything for us. But yet, at the same time, whenever we began to walk with God, we began to move in things that God is calling us to do, we're going to have some struggles because the enemy doesn't want us to succeed. He doesn't want us to become the body, the people, the church. He doesn't want this church to be the church that is laid upon our pastor's heart in this city because he knows what's going to happen. Walls are going to be broken down. Amen. People are going to begin to be healed. People are going to begin to see God in a great and mighty way. Mm -hmm. And the devil doesn't want to see that, but he doesn't even want to see that in your own life. He doesn't want to see victories in your own life. And today, God is saying it's time to move forward. In, let's go to the next scripture. In Ezekiel 14, 10, Moses and the children of Israel are already out. They've already left Egypt. You know what's so funny? This was only about three days after they left Egypt. Pharaoh decided to come after them. It says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. 
Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? How many times have we said to God, God, you, you, you said you're going to do it, but I don't see it. I don't see what's happening. It, it's just, uh, just a dead word. Just a dead word. And he says, Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. You know, how many times have we said, I should have just stayed at home. I shouldn't have gone to church. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have said that at work. I should not have, I should not have prayed over my food in a restaurant. Because people are, they don't, they don't understand. All these kind of situations are adding up. But it says, uh, Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, ye shall see again no more forever. And that Egyptian, that thing that's been holding you back, that's been destroying you, today is the day that you're not going to be affected by it anymore. Amen. Because God says, and he told Moses to, to keep that in your heart, to stand up and move forward, to go on. Let's read, read the last verse I got up there. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Sometimes we come to a situation in our life just like the children of Israel. Our enemies behind us, the dead season, the red season in front of us. There's no way out. We come up to a wall, and the wall's there. We can't go this way, we can't go that way because that's where they're at. Sometimes God is putting us in a position where the only way that we're going to be able to see what God is wanting us to do is that it's his victory, not ours. Amen. It's his victory and not ours. Moses tried it once, and he failed. He killed the Egyptian, but that was just a small thing. Here, they killed, no telling how many. You know, and archaeologists have found in the under under the Dead Sea, about this area, where they're proving these scriptures are being true. They're finding chariots and, and stuff that are underwater. They're, they're discovering them now. So it's proven fact that this took place. And it's a proven fact in our own lives whenever we began to allow God to move in our hearts and our lives that we're going to begin to see great and mighty things happening on us. Whether it be our jobs, whether it be our kids, whether it be our family that we're praying for, or whether it be whatever the situation. Maybe it's just a spiritual thing that you're going through in your own life that maybe your husband and wife don't even know that you're going through. But you've been crying out to God and you're saying, God, I need help. I need deliverance from this. I need set free because it's holding me back. And then all of a sudden, the Lord is saying it's time to go forward, to move forward into the, that area that you've trusted in me and allowing me to to do the things that I need to do. Because too many times we've come to that wall and we say, okay, we can't go back. Let's go back to bondage. Let's go back to Egypt and let's live in, the, in that life that we had. And yet God says, I'm taking you to a promised land. He's promised each and every one of us something better than what we are right now. Amen. He's promised us better things that we're going to accomplish in our hearts and in our lives. I'm not saying just as a church. I'm talking about even, even in an individual life. What God has spoken to you Maybe years ago, you had a burden, burden in your heart for something to happen, and you haven't seen it, and you, every once in a while it comes, comes back up. God is saying it's time today to take a new step forward and begin to allow him to do the work that he said he's going to do because he hears you. He knows where you're at. He knows exactly where you're at. You know, I was thinking a couple of weeks ago when the pastor was preaching on, on Job, and the scripture that stuck out so strong to me was, have you considered my servant Job? You know, the situations that we're going through in our life, I'm just wondering if God ain't up there saying, 
Hey, have you considered my son Calvin? Have you considered my son Chris? And it takes on a whole new meaning for me it's for the things that I'm going through in my own personal life. And instead of trying to blame God for it, that why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Maybe it's a point to prove to the enemy that he ain't got nothing on us. Amen. You know, he ain't got nothing on us. Pardon my English, but that's <laughs> that not texting you. Yeah. <laughs> but we've got to learn that it's not what we think it is. Amen. It's not what it assumes to be the appearance of it. But there's those walls, those things that we've got to break down. And today is the day that we've got to move forward and allow the presence of God to saturate our hearts and our lives in such a way that we begin to sense and realize that he is in control. He knows our hearts. He knows our cries. He knows our thoughts. Maybe we're saying, I wish I could do be a, a better person here or, or whatever. And God says, I hear it. And I understand what you're saying. It's not because of your selfish needs. It's because it's something I've placed in your heart and your life. Amen. You know, and that's where we've got to learn to allow him to move in, in, a, in a mightier way. You know, we just, we just allowed the enemy to kick us, kick us around. You know, we, we've been in bondage. We've been like the people there. Moses, we, we, had, we, we could have done this. We, we should have been back there, but God had a better plan for it. And most of them didn't, or a lot, every one of them didn't get to go in because of their unbelief. And I don't want that to happen in my own life and in your life because of unbelief that God can't take us to that point in our lives that he wants to take us to. Because he's desires for us to be above and not below. We're, we're the head and not the tail. You know, we're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I say we are a peculiar people. You know, we're not like this world. We're, not, we're in the world, but we're not like it. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to begin to see that he's got it all under control. He understands what you're going through. He sees where you're at. He knows what you're doing. Yeah. And he said, and he, he's saying, move forward, not to go forward. I'm not going to those other scriptures. So that's what's been on my heart to this week. And Lord wants you to know that he does care. And he understands the circumstances and the situations that you're going through. And he wants you to just give them to him. He wants you to realize that he is in control. Even though it looks like it's chaos everywhere you go. But he's got a plan and purpose. And there's people that are watching what you're doing. That's being affected. Just like the pastor said about the, the person that came at the back of the church and last Sunday and was standing there for maybe two songs, I guess it was, or at least one, I know, one complete whole song she stood there, stood back there. And that's why God is causing there to be an awareness of what's happening. You know, one, one last thing. When the children of Israel went over to Jordan to go into the promised land, what was the comment that Rahab the Herod told the spies? We heard of your defeat with the Egyptians. And our people are afraid of those things. Man. That was 40 years ago. They were still living off of those fears. What God has done. How powerful of a witness could we have if we began to move and trust in God and people would go, I heard about you Guys, I heard about y'all's church. Y'all started out there and God began to do things. You know, the enemy of, the, of Fort Worth would say, oh, tell people, don't go there, don't go there, don't do that. Because why? Because there's power there. Amen. There's the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what we want. Whenever we walk into a place, they, they recognize who we are and recognize that God is fighting our battles. 
just food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Lord, you know where each and every one of us are today. And you know what our cry has been. Lord, there's many different cries, many different thoughts, many different things. But you know each and every one. And Lord, we just ask that today that you would touch and, and be with each and every one, God. And show them that you do answer. That you are answering the cries. And that our enemies today that's been keep, keeping us back, we will not be affected by them anymore, Father. Lord, they're in the past. They're, they're buried. They're under, under, underneath. And we're above, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.